abawangalira mu gwanga la Sweden no Sweden chapter abali mu kutukwe kalakaso ba mu kola demonstrations olwa abantu bafe 1918 the missing 18 abawambibwa eri mu bidi abiri pako lwa ero myaka esatu ena tibala biwaka abantu bano abantu bana Uganda basaze okwe kalakasa abagize benchu kachuka okulaba nga bate kakuninga government agencies zawe okomya okuwa genome 7 ensimbi kubensimbe za zikoze sabube kutulugunya kutta na kutusa bikolbero ate ku bana Uganda nakulaze ko banafe aba Netherlands Belgium katenno ne banafe aba Sweden nabo bali mukolo muri mugwe gumu abe kalakasa ale kino chochi yitiride a uh, church no abantu bachi jumbi denyo nyini dala no recho guno mwaka bidi abiri mwena gwa kwekalakasa gwa kugoba generali kaguta mu 7 at vire solo kwa galira mu nsi ya fe mukusabo kirize au twegate ko tugende Sweden ate tufune bana fe bana Uganda abawanga lileyo ngabe kalakasa live in Sweden we are demanding for our 18 missing people we are holding the Swedish uh, government accountable for the missing people because they are funding Museveni yeah bring back our people Tag a friend, bring a friend, let them join us. Muliba Kabibon Nava joining the Yeah. Let's demand for our people. The Swedish government is responsible for our 18 missing people. Bring back our people. AU in Uganda, stop sponsoring for our operation. Enough is enough. You cannot be silent anymore. Stop being in bed with the dictator.
Owange, Peng Peng, Munyampi, Alabikari, somewhere else. He's not here. AU in Uganda, Embassy of Sweden in Kampala, stop sponsoring for our operation. Thank you. Okay. You are the best. Thank you. You can. When you speak. Oh. Yeah. Um, ladies and gentlemen, we're here today to protest. Um, we're here. In, sorry, I should be here. Okay, let's do myself. All right. Um, yes. Good afternoon, good evening, good morning, listeners, from wherever you're listening in from. Um, I'm speaking to you from Stockholm, uh, Uh We're here to protest, um, first of all, um, to demand uh, for our people, for the, for the missing 18. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we want to uh, make aware, we want to let the Swedish people know uh, that there is a gross human rights violation in Uganda and uh, we want to, uh, to mobilize public opinion so that uh, they can stand in solidarity with us to oppose the current regime of dictator Yoweri Museveni. We are here really to demand uh, the freedom of the 18. But the 18 are just but, you know, they represent a fraction of, of, of many, many, many others who are missing. So um, we want to demand for the freedom of all the political prisoners who are incarcerated uh, in different uh, locations. Some might have died, we don't know. And this has happened since 2021. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, this is quite serious. Thirdly, we would like to urge the government of Sweden to stop funding the dictator. Um, the money used is taxpayers' money, which goes towards uh, the oppression of Ugandans. So we are here to urge the prime minister, we are here to urge the foreign minister uh, to take action, and this action should be immediate. Um, so please join us, the rest of the world, uh, to protest. And uh, we will not, we, we will not um, stop, we will not relent, and we shall not keep quiet until all the political prisoners are freed. And actually, until there is a regime change, because uh, Museveni is an existential threat to Ugandans. He, his, um, the whole, um, his reign of 38 years have done nothing but to run the country aground. So we just need to, uh, yeah, enforce our regime change. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. I'll speak to you again. So it's going to do craft now. But I, and you can speak without the mic. You can speak without the mic. Yes. My life. Yes. Yes. Um, good afternoon, all of you. Uh, here and uh, a lot of you were watching us from all social media partners. 
Uh, the name's a Robert, and as my colleague Ali put it, uh, we're here to uh, demonstrate. So, um, what are we demonstrating about? Um, a lot of you know, um, are not aware, but we are Ugandans, and we represent the Ugandan diaspora. So as Ugandans living in diaspora, we are trying to add our voice to the voiceless. Uh, to, to give you some context as to why we are uh, uh, um, protesting, um, um, I think it has become very evident that no one back home is really advocating for, uh, um, for change, especially for the, um, the whereabouts of these people. Uh, some of you, uh, some of us who are living in, the, in Europe, especially EU, uh, we want to add a voice on that. Why? Because we pay taxpayers' money. So we've dubbed our demonstration today as the missing 18 Ugandans. And the other part of the uh, theme is to do with uh, funded by the Swedish uh, taxpayers' money. And where does Sweden come into the picture? To give you some context in that, our, our leading, um, our politicians, especially the, the uh, General Museveni, was here in Sweden back in the 80s. Uh, I guess he was groomed in Sweden, and Sweden is giving them a lot of support, which is fine. would like any support from all the de developmental partners. So unfortunately... Excuse me? Excuse me? Okay. While you are talking, I'm going to bring something. So, yes, guys, uh, I guess I'm back live. So, what I was saying is that the reason this is really emotion for us is because um, Ugandan and the General Museveni was here in Sweden. Uh, we would expect, as Ugandans, or we would expect um, the General Museveni to have learned something to a, a replicate in Uganda. Uh, Sweden as a country which is a, a symbol of human rights. Uh, what comes to mind when you speak about Sweden is because it is a country which observes rule and law. Unfortunately, uh, for someone who was in Sweden for six years, I don't think he's really picked a leaf for um, the time he was in, in Uganda. Hello? Hello? Is it working? I think so. Hello, hello. So, guys, uh, we're back. We're back now from our mic. So, just to take you back, uh, we're talking about General Museveni. He was in Sweden uh, for six years, and we would expect as Ugandans that um, uh, General Museveni would have picked a leaf in terms of observing human rights. So, the demonstration today is really cutting down on the uh, gross human uh, rights abuse in Uganda. So it's really, really disturbing for a country um, um, like Uganda um, to be facing this kind of uh, um, uh, nightmare. Um, as you can see here, we are few of us. A lot of these people are here because they really feel hard uh, and they want other voice to their uh, brothers and sisters who are missing. So, why aren't we so many here? It's because uh, I think back home, uh, General Seven has created a fear and we find ourselves like, it's the same thing in Europe. Most of the people here in Europe are really held hostage. Uh, the other day I was passing by um, uh, one of our colleagues, um, a Ugandan, uh, I told him we're going to be trying to add voice, uh, voices. Uh, do you know what he told me? He told me, like, I'm for change, but tell you what, I don't want to speak about change in Canada. Why? I'm going to be scared today that it will pick me at the end. So that's the predicament most of the Ugandan videos for, uh, find uh, themselves in. And it's not only in Uganda, and it's not only in Europe, uh, even in Uganda, it's really dis disturbing that the populace have been scared to death, that they can't add a voice to uh, the voiceless because they're scared to death. They'll be picked up, they'll be incarcerated, they'll be tortured, they'll disappear. And that's 
the reason we're here. So our voice goes to the EU. Um, the EU is a development partner, and the EU has a lot of development um, partners, as I said. And our, uh, our message goes to uh, Ursula von uh, May, the president of the uh, EU, to throw some light to Uganda, because Uganda really, really needs a voice, especially from these leading institutions there. So what is really disturbing at the moment as well is that as we are looking for our loved ones in Uganda, um, we have organizations like NAM. Uh, for those who don't know NAM, NAM is an organization uh, in full as the NAN aligned um, um, movement uh, member states. These are all institutions which were created um, um, post colonial time whereby um, they were showing, showing they brushing off the colonial era and they were trying to get civility within their respective countries. So what is disturbing that so many heads of state are landing in Uganda and next week to talk about uh, God knows what. Um, and my question would be, do these people know that the country they are going to have this movement, this non-aligned movement uh, symposium is really having people meet. That is starting. So for the Swedish community, we also need to ask of you to put to taste, to demand of your politicians, to know where your taxpayers money is going. And the other thing we would like the Swedish um, uh, community to know is what projects they are driving, the government is driving. Yeah? We've seen a lot of um, Swedish projects, especially in northern Uganda, where we've seen uh, a number of our brothers and sisters being evicted from land. That is very un-Swedish for a country which um, uh, pioneers civility and rule of law. So that's something we need to probably at some point digest into. But today, the, uh, the demonstration is about the missing HG. So who are the missing HG? I want, you, I want you to follow me here. Uh, we've done a, a showcase for these 18 Ugandans. And the first one we would like to present to you is none other than John Bosco Chivalama. This is a gentleman who was abducted uh, in 2019 prior to the um, Uganda general elections. Uh, as you can see here, uh, this gentleman as of now is aged 42 years. Uh, he was an accountant. And um, yeah, he had a family. He had, he had three kids, as you can see here, um, who as a human being and as a family person, uh, you who are looking at me and who are watching me, what would you think would be going into the minds of the family of this gentleman who is missing? This is our number one missing person, John Bosco Chivalama. So we will need to know uh, by the government of Uganda where this gentleman uh, is at the moment. So, uh, the next person we would like to present to you, who is missing, is none other than John Damalira. John Damalira is another of those missing people. He was a mechanic, he was picked at his place of work, and uh, he's been missing since 2020, um, um, uh, pretty much prior to the elections. So, <laughs> The disturbing part of it is that um, the military um, personnel picked up this gentleman out of his place of work. And it's bizarre that in this day and age, we have a government which has the right to pick people. And they go missing without a trace for four years. So can you figure out who is in Sweden that the Swedish government 
we beach police could come to your place and um, pick you up and lock you away without being accountable. So that's what is going on and that's why we are here. So next in line, we would like to present to you another missing person. His name is Joseph Bagoma. Uh, as of now, he's 30. When he was picked up, he was um, um, 24. So four years have passed without him being cast, his family casting an eye on him. So, ladies and gentlemen, you really need to lay your voice to these uh, people who we will need to know where their whereabouts are. Now, I'd like to also present to you another gentleman. Uh, his name is Moses Mbabazi. Uh, he was abducted when, as well, he was probably uh, 26. Now he's 30, yes. He had a kid, and as you can see, that is a little kid, city kid, who is really um, wondering. And together with our family, we couldn't bring all the family members here, but we want to advocate for anyone who can lend a voice, especially the government of Sweden, uh, uh, the prime minister, uh, the Swedish ambassador in, in Uganda, you need to lay your voice to these people. We need to know, we need, you need to put General Museveni accountable to where are these people. This little kid is really missing her dad. Uh, so we will need to know uh, his whereabouts as we progress. Um, next in line, we have another gentleman. Uh, we call him number seven, uh, abducted in 2028 no no in 2020 sorry um his name is peter kiria so who is it kiria uh it is say it is now 32 years he was a plumber he was a plumber and he was speaking in 2021 quite bizarre it's around that time prior to the general elections do you know what is bizarre is while we are looking for these people who are abducted prior to the elections. The elections have gone since 2021. Four years down the line, we don't know where this guy is. Um, yeah, how was he abducted? Yeah, so, I mean, he was coming from his place of work. Uh, apparently, he... The military people pulled over him and um, yeah and he you know bundled him in a drone um, for you who are in Europe a drone in Uganda is a um, a special um, abduction vehicle um, which um, the security uh, personnel banned anyone they feel is a voice of dissent so uh, this gentleman was really banded in a drone and was pulled over uh, in some unknown place until now. So we would like to know this gentleman's where Now, where we go, we have another one, number eight. Number eight is um, Yuda Sempija. He's 42, no, 44 years. Uh, he was a businessman, uh, like all Ugandans um, uh, who are advocating for change. It was, it was one of those victims who was picked up and, uh, and apparently right now we don't know his whereabouts. Again, this guy was picked up in 2020. Uh, he has, or he still has, um, assumably is alive, uh, five uh, children. So one would ask, if this guy is missing, what is going on with the kids? Who is fending for the kids? Is the government of Uganda Fending for these people who are missing. That's another discussion for another day. But we'll be now keen to know who is fending for these kids and where and when shall we um, get a, a glimpse of the gentleman called Saint Peter Yida. Now, next in line, we have we have Vincent Nalumonso. 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 Um, so he's 31 years of age. Uh, his uh, occupation was a businessman. He was also abducted in 2020. And he had three kids. 
who is fending for the kids? Do they uh, know where the fathers are? Apparently no. Uh, does anyone care in Uganda? Of course, his family and some of you, as few of us, really care. So that's why we're here, we're lending the voice to see why this guy is missing. And the reason he was picked up, apparently he was wearing something like I'm wearing here, the beret. So a beret, a t-shirt for the new, which is the opposition. leading opposition party in Uganda, can land you in trouble. So this guy was apparently just picked up for having a beret and he's been missing since 2024 20, years, when 2024. 20, now, moving on, we have another young man, yeah? This guy was picked up when he was 23. Uh, this year, 2024, is 27. Can you imagine? He's been missing for four years. His family, his loved ones, don't have a clue where this gentleman is, yeah? So, um, I call to the public, Ugandans, friends of uh, Ugandans, to lay a voice demanding the whereabouts of Isma Sesazi. Um, I'll go forward to pick another victim. Um, this victim is Zimula Dennis. Who is Zimula Dennis? He was 26 years when he was picked up. He's like all other people. Four years down the line, he's missing. He was a businessman. He was abducted also prior to the 2021 general election. Um, you can see one of the little siblings being held by the president or the elected president of Uganda in the last elections, Robert Chagulani St. Amu, um, adding a voice uh, to the voiceless when they were hosting a missing um, press conference at the Secretariat. This Zimula Dennis left all he had to kids. Um, the little one there smiling, he doesn't have a clue where his dad is. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, those who are viewing us, those who are listening to me here in the uh, city heart of Stockholm, lay your hands, ask your, uh, your politicians, ask your, um, your loved ones, ask uh, human rights organizations to lend a hand to the voiceless. So we're going to move on to a few other ones which are also missing in Uganda. young man yeah this guy was picked up when he was 23 uh, this year in 2024 is 27 can you imagine he's been missing for four years his family his loved ones don't have a clue where this gentleman is yeah so um, I call to the public Ugandans, friends of uh, Ugandans, to lay a 
voice demanding the whereabouts of Isma Sessas. Um, I'll go forward to pick another victim. Um, this victim is Zimula Dennis. Who is Zimula Dennis? He was 26 years when he was picked up. He's like all other people. Four years down, down the line, he's missing. He was a businessman. He was abducted also prior to the 2021 general election. Um, you can see one of the little siblings being held by the president or the elected president of Uganda in the last elections, Robert Chagulani Sentamu, um, adding a voice uh, to the voiceless when they were hosting a missing um, press conference at the Secretariat. This Zimula Dennis left all he had to kids. Um, the little one there smiling, he doesn't have a clue where his dad is. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, those who are viewing us, those who are listening to me here in the uh, city hall of Stockholm, lay your hands, ask your, uh, your politicians, ask your, um, your loved ones, ask uh, human rights organizations to lend a hand to the voiceless. So we're going to move on to a few other ones which are also missing in Uganda. So we've done a, you could call it a show um, here in Hotoriot. Uh, the next one is a young man by the name of Martini Lukwago. Uh, right now he's, third, he's supposedly, be, supposedly 35. He was abducted when he was four years uh, younger than that. He was a businessman and insight is the little one who wonders and is bewildered of the whereabouts of his dad. Um, um, like all other Ugandans uh, who are abducted or are being abducted, is still missing. So we urge General Museveni to free not only these 18 abducted people, but all political prisoners on the account of the 20 or the recent uh, concluded general elections in 2021. Moving ahead, we're going to um, another young man, a younger man by the names of Mosisi Mbower. is now 36 years in 2024, uh, but we don't know his whereabouts. Uh, it was abducted in, in December 2021, and uh, we, want, we want the uh, global community, the global village, to lay a hand uh, in uh, advocating to the voiceless who are missing in Uganda. So General Mrs. Museveni, uh, once again, we would like to know the whereabouts of Mrs. Simboa, and we would like you to um, uh, promptly uh, release the political prisoners. Uh, we are not in an election campaign. The elections, com the elections were really ended four years ago. Uh, we don't see a reason of you still having these people unless they, um, they um, unless you want to charge them as um, uh, of enemy. I mean, if there is a crime they committed. We have courts of laws in Uganda. Uh, bring them to court, charge them, and then. Um, let's uh, get this sorted. Uh, we're moving on to another young gentleman. Uh, uh, what is so synonymous uh, with these people who are missing is that they are in their youth. Uh, the average age of everyone who was abducted, except uh, the senior people, um, I would say 25. These are the youth. You can't be a, a leader, you can't be a, a president for a country yeah. and abduct, abduct the youth. The youth are the future um, leaders and uh, if there's any crime they committed, I think it will be in order for you to bring them to courts of law. So this ja gentleman, uh, his name is George Kasumba. Right now he's supposed to be 
39. Um, I think when he was abducted, he was 35. Yeah. So he had three kids. Uh, and the very interesting part of it is that this gentleman was abducted when he was uh, just coming from a youth uh, um, uh, elections where he won, it was standing to be a councillor. Unfortunately, he met his fate going from the election um, election centre to his home. So those people um, who voted for him and who saw him casting his vote have never seen him since then, including his family, his loved ones, and the Ugandans who would like to uh, know his whereabouts. So General Museveni, we would like you to um, answer and give us uh, uh, any tips to his whereabouts, because Uganda, um, as we know, is not a big country, uh, and there is no way uh, someone can go missing uh, without a trace. And um, speaking about um, someone missing, I think uh, General Museveni in in one of these um, speeches when he was really the charismatic president liberator of Uganda during the, um, the 80s, he said that there's no sense that one could be a president or a sitting president and allow the disappearance and, uh, uh, of his own citizens without having to give answers. So you rightly say that and we would like to, you know, to call you to actions, live by your word. You say you, no president can really preside over a country when there are disappearances of people, especially the youth or the citizen of your country. So please live up to your word as you had it in your teens, in your small vibrant um, early days as a leader for um, our country. So next in line we have Shafiq Wangolo. Uh, Shafiq Wangolo as you can see here, um, he left four children and a few girls here, insect, who up to now don't know the whereabouts of his their father. Uh, here insect as well is a Disturbed Widow. wife. Widow. And it's really disturbing uh, and it's emotional that this woman can go through this. No one knows who's fending for her kids. And she's disturbed to the extent that she has to go three, four years not knowing where the father of her king is. Yeah? This is the, the sad, sad, sad story in this kind of uh, situation the country finds itself. We have missing citizens, we have um, missing brothers and sisters. So, I think we need closure at some point. This is not something uh, General Museveni will push under the mat. At some point, General Museveni, you need to tell the country, you need to tell our development partners where these people are. These are human beings. These are people who had families. These are people who had people who care for them and they really deserve answers. So General Museveni, as we're in Stockholm, uh, a very familiar place, uh, you need to answer to these, to these people's voices. So next in line is another um, gentleman by the names of Michael Semudu. Uh, as of now, he's supposedly 50 years. He was also abducted um, four years ago. Um, his whereabouts are known and unknown. Yeah? 
So he was abducted prior to the elections. So all these are old cases. If they're old cases um, with a country which has rule of law, this, um, however slow the law process is in our country, four years is just too much to not resolve someone who was abducted four years ago. So this gentleman was allegedly uh, abducted for fear of his um, um, for fear of his popularity. So they had to abduct him to give way to the opposition people in his constituents where they abducted him. So, yeah, I would like to um, add on uh, some other things uh, to this um, demonstration. Uh, it has to do with the different bodies we really call upon to be supportive in this cause. And these uh, organizations are Corinthians, the AU. Ugandan being a, 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 a member of the African Union, which was uh, um, a, which was formed um, at the end of the colonial times, I think they need to address and look uh, into the Ugandan uh, missing persons issue. Uh, there's no, uh, in this time and age, a government or a country not only in Africa, worldwide, that could have missing people. So since we are um, aligned with the AU, uh, we would like to call the, um, the AU um, uh, leaders to look into the Ugandan issue. It's really pressing. Uh, a lot of people are in despair, and we really need answers as to what they can uh, to support not only the people who are missing their people, but the country, because the country seems to be going the wrong way. The other association I'd like to call upon to look into that, I think I'm all, I mentioned it um, um, earlier, is the NAM, the Non-Alignment Movement. You can't convey to talk about uh, whatever you were talking about in terms of political affiliation and the independence about uh, um, peaceful um, um, autonomy in your respective uh, country without knowing that the hosting country uh, for the forthcoming NAM event is keeping people missing and even up to today is really abducting people. Uh, in the last two weeks uh, we've had a few cases of abducted people. Uh, we have a Muslim clerk um, who was abducted uh, which is uh, really disturbing. Uh, we've had um, um, recently uh, on, on, on Tuesday uh, uh, another abduction so this is not an uh, is this is an, uh, a, a spiral it's a vicious cycle of uh, abduction and the disappearance of Uganda you can be in a, the the 21st century and as if you are in the medieval times that people are still being picked so this is something we think, which we feel is wrong and should stop so we would like to have our demo, uh, development partners to look into Uganda to put a close look to the Ugandan case because the Ugandan case is very delicate. Um, so I caution all the leaders uh, of the member states of the NAM to look closely and if they have, if they get a minute um, on their summit coming up in Uganda to ask General Museveni, um, what is this that we're hearing? Uh, what are the missing 18? And they say, this is a fraction of the many prisoners. Uh, uh, is this something we, we want to align to? Um, so, 
put him to to boot. Uh, Mr. Vinny, we're seeing these things, uh, but do we stand for this in this day and age? Oh, can you sort this out, Esa? So, the leaders of the non-alignment countries, we ask you while you're convening in your uh, forum coming up um, 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 in the coming uh, weeks, try to put uh, to book General Museveni. Um, now, the other association which is really pressing me as someone who is living in Sweden is um, the Swedish East African Chamber of Commerce. For those who don't know this, Welcome, but welcome in which kind of environment? We're in an environment we have missing people. Huh? So Sweden, where do you, where, where do you, I mean, I, I'm trying to find even the right ones. I mean, it's really less informal, which I highly doubt because you have an ambassador in Uganda. So we call upon this association, while they're preparing their um, symposium uh, in February, to call out General Museveni. We hear there are 18 people missing. Before we get down to business, can we really uh, address this issue? Because this issue is not going to go away. Mosefen is going is not going to throw this under the mat. This thing is going to be a recurring uh, thing. This is our first demonstration this year uh, or this month in Sweden, and it's not the last. So until Mosefen produces these young ones, these brothers and sisters, he must rest assured, expect um, to hear from us, not only in Sweden, today um, we've had, probably even seen them live, our comrades in um, Germany, who are also lending the voice to the voice. The people in the, in the, the Netherlands and Belgium, they are also in on this, that we really need to get out of our comfort zone uh, to lay a voice. Yeah? We should not be coming here to lay a voice um, if we were not the situation. And we have a parliament, we have politicians, we have even our citizens who are, as I told you earlier, they are intimidated, they are fearless, they don't want to go to, um, to advocate. For, uh, for any kind of uh, um, change or voice in, in in terms of releasing our brothers and sisters, so um, and we would expect, in all honesty, that uh, once these people are left um, um, powerless, their representatives in power would lend a voice to to, uh, to these calls. But surprisingly, um, uh, it is until this year, what, well, probably late last year, end of last year, that three years after the elections, the parliament had finally, and this was due to the mass, um, um, mass pressure for the citizens of Uganda, they managed to bring this to the table in the parliament. The parliamentarians, both in the opposition and the incumbent, they have really let down the Ugandans. So parliamentarians, if you're there and listening uh, um, live, or probably you listen to this uh, um, in playback, uh, you really need to get your priorities right. Yeah? Politics aside, uh, you wouldn't you wouldn't like to be in the shoes of the missing 18 and all the other brothers and sisters missing, missing for four years. So, politics aside, this year 2024 should be 
a more progressive and more humanistic year, whereby you advocate and lend your voice to bring to light the people who are missing. People are hurting. Even us in the diaspora are hurting. Yeah. Even, even though for the most part a lot of people are really intimidated. Like I say, you learn to some, um, you talk to some people and they say, you know, listen Robert, much as I like change, but I can't I can't advocate for change for fear of my life and my loved ones. So how long is this going to take, uh, go on? Whereby Ugandans are living in, in fear of uh, saying something which is really a human right. This is really disturbing. Uh, we shouldn't be where we are. Uh, looking at the times and the, um, the troubles the country has gone through. This is something uh, Museveni has ne uh, needs to reverse. Uh, he was a refugee in Sweden. Uh, he was given a lot of support and uh, is being supported by the government of Sweden. Um, and uh, I guess we're going to have to put a lot of pressure to the government of Sweden to redress the way they are supporting General Museveni. So to all of those who are there, if you can, wherever you were in your position, speak to your municipality leaders, speak to your friends and, um, um, and families in Europe, work colleagues in, in the EU to lend out a voice to our brothers and sisters who are missing in Uganda. So this is the backdrop. I will show you our station. Uh, uh, I don't know if you can show this to them. This has been our um, backdrop of our brothers. They're missing, they're still missing, and we're not going to let this, or we're not going to allow General Museveni to strip this under the mat. These are real people, they have loved ones, and they need answers. They need to know where their, about, their whereabouts are. So, ladies and gentlemen uh, from Stockholm, I would like to say that I, it's been a pleasure to come here to render my voice the little I can, and hopefully um, we will be with you um, tomorrow at some other time. Uh, uh, um, we are not giving up. Um, addressing this issue, if, if, and that's if, uh, General Museveni doesn't sort this out, we need a closure to this. Thank you, and have a, a, a lovely evening, and God bless you. Mm. And Oza Amurid, Banafe, Nope, Sweden, Chapter, and now we were told we were going to see Za, or Nakora, we were to tell. Anti guno gwe mwaka uh, ugo kwe kalakasa guno gwe mwaka ugo goba na che marida jeno yowe kaguta mu seven uh, teli yoku linda kulala teli yoshila wabula guno utina uge nino koze saa ukulaba angato goba kesi nene cha wanga kari toyanzi za nyoba nyoanyi toyanzi ge mwebali umulimu gwe mkoza makula ukulaba angamundu sedobozi elao kari mm, elao kari mm. Kali, tu yanziza, mwenda bali kwa mwa kula ba mwe tu gubereya, mukamata na sababu kumi re, tu jawa tu damo kuvio gerevi gambo, ba cha imwe raba.